Today's lesson is there's no shame in faking it. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger. And I'm Candace. And today, Candace and myself are going to continue talking about animal mimicry in the animal kingdom, how some animals fake it. They have these colors that aren't really indicative of their characteristics. They're just copying other animals that have the same colors in order to keep predators away from them. Now, we did talk about this. This is called Batesian mimicry. And how did that come about, Candace? Well, the scientist Henry Bates was in Brazil and he observed that a number of slow flying butterflies were being ignored by predators, even though they were easy catch. And he made the connection between their color patterns and the color patterns of some other more dangerous species. And what he concluded was that the rare butterflies were gaining some protection because they looked similar to these more dangerous or unpleasant tasting species. So they took advantage of that fact and in that way were able to avoid being eaten by predators. Very good. So of course, in the first day of our lesson about this topic, we did talk about the butterflies in Brazil, but now we've got some other examples. We're going to talk about bees and wasps, and first of all, we're going to talk about some snakes, more specifically the king snake and the coral snake. So let's find out what this is all about. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson right now. Instances of Batesian mimicry can be found all over the animal kingdom. The harmless king snake, for example, has developed a color pattern that is almost identical to that of the deadly coral snake. One look at the distinctive red, yellow, and black bands on a king snake is enough to make predators think twice about eating it, just in case it packs a venomous bite like its near twin. identical 指一模一样的或是完全相同的。像是Kelly's sweater is identical to the one her sister has. Kelly的毛衣跟她姐姐拥有的那一件一模一样。也可以说,Roger and Brad are wearing identical jackets. Roger和Brad穿着完全相同的夹克。Okay, so in the first part of today's lesson, it begins by saying instances of Batesian mimicry can be found all over the animal kingdom. So instances just means examples, and you can see examples of this mimicry or faking it, and you can find them all over the animal kingdom. Now, in the next sentence here, it says the harmless king snake, for example, has developed a color pattern that is almost identical to that of the deadly coral snake. So here we've got two different kinds kinds of snakes that uh, look similar with their color pattern. We've got the king snake and the coral snake. Do you like snakes, Candace? Not really, but I did have an experience where I tried touching a snake and that the texture and the temperature is very strange. It is weird indeed. And of course, when I was a kid mowing my grandmother's lawn, of course, we always had to watch out for garter snakes in the grass because if you weren't careful, you would run them over and that would be quite a mess there. But uh, in this particular case, we're talking about the harmless king snake. So if you see a king snake, well, it's going to be harmless. It's not going to hurt you. It's not a venomous snake, but it has developed a color pattern that is almost identical to the coral snake. So if something's identical, it's exactly the same. We often talk about identical twins, for example. If the kids are twins and they look exactly alike, we call them identical twins. Yes, that's right, Roger. My brother and sister are 
are twins, but they're not identical twins, so they don't look alike at all. In that case, we call them fraternal twins. But in this case, the king snake and the coral snake, at least the king snake, has developed identical distinctive characteristics, which are very similar to those of the coral snake. Right, and remember, we're talking about the color pattern, so it has developed a colored pattern that is almost identical to that. To the color pattern of the coral snake, which is deadly. If it bites you, you could die from getting bitten by that snake. Now, here in the next sentence, it says, "One look at the distinctive red, yellow, and black bands on a king snake is enough to make predators think twice about eating it, just in case it packs a venomous bite." Like its near twin, so here we're talking about the color patterns on the king snake. It has these distinctive red, yellow, and black bands. A band is not a bunch of musicians together playing music. In this particular case, it just refers to very thick stripes that go around something that is very small. So if you see a snake and you see these stripes going around the body. That would be describing bands, but if it's going down the length of the snake, I would call those stripes. Yes, that's right, Roger. And when you see those thick black bands on the snake, at least when predators see them, they make an association between the king snake and the coral snake. And because the coral snake is very venomous, they tend to think twice. About approaching the king snake because it looks so similar, so they wouldn't approach the king snake because they're afraid of its near twin, the coral snake. Exactly. So yeah, they see this king snake and they think, "Wow, that、uh, might not be a king snake. It might actually be a coral snake." So, well, I'm just going to.、Uh You know,、uh, cut my losses here. I'm not going to take any chances, and I just won't eat this king snake. And、uh, yes, predators probably don't even know the difference between a king snake and a coral snake. So yeah, it makes them think twice. It makes them hesitate about eating it, and they just might move along and try to find something else to eat. And they do this because it's in case. It packs a venomous bite, like it's near a twin. So, in case just means in the event of if something possibly might happen, it just moves along, just in case that king snake turns out to be a coral snake. That predator is going to be very sorry. Right. When we say packs a venomous bite, we also use the phrase packs a punch, which means that it's actually quite powerful. So the venomous bite would be quite powerful and quite deadly. It would be lethal, in fact, which is why the predators are quite careful about approaching it. So they think twice. They're quite careful about approaching it. Indeed. So we've talked about butterflies and we've talked about snakes, and in the next part, we're going to talk about flies, specifically about bees and wasps and those dangerous insects that、uh, sometimes sting us. So let's get to it. Let's listen to the second part of our lesson right now, and we'll be right back to discuss it. Similarly, many species of flies. Have the same black and yellow stripes as bees and wasps. Eager to avoid getting stung, most predators will stay well clear. Though in fact, these flies have no stingers to speak of. But surely the most innovative of these animals is the mimic octopus. This master of disguise can completely change not only its colors but also its body shape in order to resemble the venomous lionfish, the deadly sea snake. And several other dangerous creatures of the deep. The second part, we see the word "innovative." This word is a synonym for "innovative," "new," "innovative," or "something with a progressive spirit." For example, Michael has had some innovative ideas to help the company. Michael has had some innovative ideas to help the company. Michael has had some innovative ideas to help the company. Michael has had some innovative ideas to help the company. Michael has had some innovative ideas to help the company. The research team came up with many innovative new products. 那个研究团队提出了许多革命性的新产品。另外，补充这个字的动词 innovate, i n n o v a t e, innovate 表示创新、革新或是改革。例如 ，Ted innovates clever solutions to household problems. Ted 对家事问题有创新的聪明解决方法。或者 The tech company innovated numerous groundbreaking products. 
那家科技公司创新制造出许多突破性的产品。接着，我们看到名词 disguise， 指伪装、乔装、化身或是装扮，像是 some thieves put on disguises and tried to rob the bank。有些小偷穿戴上伪装用品，并试图抢银行。也可以说 ，Everyone recognized Phil, even though he was wearing a disguise. 每个人都认出了 Phil， 即便他有装扮。再来，我们看到单词 resemble， 这个字是动词，表示与点点点相像或是类似。例如 ，Jason resembles a famous movie star. Jason 长得像一位著名的电影明星。也可以说。This house is so dark that it resembles the set for a horror movie. 这个房子如此阴暗，类似恐怖电影里的场景。Okay, so similarly, like butterflies, like snakes, many species of flies have the same black and yellow stripes as bees and wasps. So of course、uh, you know those insects that fly around, and、uh, of course bees produce honey. But you don't want to get too close to them because if they sting you, it's going to hurt. And that's what bees sometimes do. And wasps are similar insects. A wasp is、uh, maybe a little more nasty than a bee. I know that、uh, the Vespa scooters that you see riding around in Taiwan are from Italy, and the word Vespa means wasp in Italian. So be careful when you ride those scooters; you might get stung. <laughs> yes, and I can tell you that a wasp sting is no fun. Unlike bees, wasps keep their stinger. So when they sting you, they can sting you more than one time. Whereas if bees sting you, they lose their stinger and die themselves. So for bees, the stinger is mainly a way to protect themselves, but they die at the same time. Whereas wasps are more like predators, and they tend to attack bees as well. So beware, wasps are incredibly dangerous. Exactly, and of course, you know the distinguishing characteristic of bees and wasps. Is that pattern of stripes on their bodies? So some species of flies have that same kind of pattern. It's black and yellow stripes, which again are long, colorful patterns on something. You might have a striped shirt, for example, and so these insects have those same yellow stripes. So of course, these other predators would want to avoid getting stung, as it says here in the next sentence. Eager to avoid getting stung, they really don't want to get stung by any insect. Most predators will stay well clear, though in fact these flies have no stingers to speak of. So predators again don't really want to take any chances there. They see these insects that have the stripes that are the same as bees and wasps, and so they think, hmm. Well, you never know. That might actually turn out to be a wasp with a nasty stinger on it.、So、I'm just not going to take any chances here. I'm going to play it safe and fly away and kill another day. So they stay clear, but、uh, these flies have no stingers to speak of. A stinger, of course, is that sharp object that sticks out. The end of a bee or a wasp, and if they stick it in your skin, it can hurt really terribly. That's what a stinger is, and the verb is to sting. And then the past tense of to sting is stung, and the past participle is also stung. So you don't want to get stung by a wasp. So they have no stingers to speak of. When we say to speak of, to mention, or they don't really exist. So there's not much to speak of. There's not really much to mention about stingers when we refer to these insects that are mimicking bees and wasps. Exactly. They may have something, maybe something that can harm you, but they're really harmless and they're not going to cause a lot of damage. So they don't really have stingers to speak of. They don't really have. Have anything that could harm you. Now, moving on to the next paragraph here, it says, "But surely the most innovative of these animals is the mimic octopus." So again, we talked about butterflies and snakes and flies. Now we're going to talk about the octopus. In this particular case, it's called a mimic octopus, and we're saying that it is 
innovative, which means it comes up with lots of new ideas. If you're an innovative company, of course, you come up with lots of new ideas for products and services, and you probably can make a lot of money in the future. And innovative, I believe, is the American pronunciation. I've heard British people say innovative.、Uh, you can pronounce it either way, depending on where you are. So different pronunciations are quite acceptable in different places. So you can get used to different ways of pronouncing the word. And I am really interested in the name of the octopus. In fact, it's called a mimic octopus, which literally means that it copies. Other things. So when you mimic, sometimes you will mimic the way someone speaks, or you will copy the way someone moves. So if you've ever seen a mime, usually their faces are painted white, and they're doing some sort of street performance, and they usually follow people around in the street and try to copy their actions, which is to entertain other people. But this mimic octopus. Doesn't do it to entertain or for fun. It does it in order to protect itself. Right. So let's talk about the mimic octopus. This master of disguise can completely change not only its colors but also its body shape in order to resemble the venomous lionfish, the deadly sea snake, and several other dangerous creatures of the deep. So the mimic octopus, of course, is a master of disguise. Disguise means you can hide yourself behind a costume or behind your behavior. You could disguise your voice on the phone, for example, by putting a piece of cloth over the phone or something like that, so people don't know who you are. You can disguise your voice, and disguise can also be a noun. You can wear disguises, for example, if you want to pretend you're somebody else and try to fool somebody. But again, the mimic octopus is a master of disguise. It can look many different ways. It can change its colors. Not only that, but it can also change the shape of its body. And they do this in order to resemble other kinds of creatures. Now, what does to resemble mean? To resemble means to look similar or to look like something. So, for example, I resemble my father, which means I look like my father, which means I have a lot of physical features in common with him. So, when I stand next to my father, you can see that my eyes are a similar color, my nose is a similar shape. In the case of the mimic octopus, it tries to resemble the very venomous lionfish. So, it would change its body shape. To resemble the lionfish in order to prevent predators from eating it. Right, and it can、uh, resemble all sorts of other dangerous creatures of the deep, and that just means of the ocean. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's move on now to the third part and wrap things up. These examples show that animals don't have to pack deadly weapons to survive in nature. Sometimes, just pretending to be dangerous is good enough to make predators keep their distance. For these accomplished Batesian mimics, there's really no shame in faking it. The third part, we saw the word "accomplished." This word is a descriptive word, meaning accomplished or with accomplishment. For example, Not only is Craig a doctor, he is also an accomplished musician. Craig 不只是个医生，也是个技巧纯熟的音乐人。或是 Naomi is an accomplished writer who has won many awards. Naomi 是一位造诣很高、获奖无数的作家。另外，补充这个字的动词 accomplish, a c c o m p l i s h, accomplish， 指完成或是达成，像是。Violet accomplished all the things she set out to do last year. Violet 完成了所有去年规划要做的事。也可以说 ，Alan works very hard to accomplish the goals that he sets for himself. Alan 很努力想达成他为自己设定的目标。再补充这个字的名词 ，accomplishment, a c c o m p l i s h m e n t, accomplishment. 它的意思是成就或是攻击。举例来说 ，Kristen was proud of her accomplishments at school. Kristen 以她在学校的成就为荣。或者 ，Sabrina has done a lot in her life, and the list of her accomplishments is very long. 
。Sabrina 一生中做了很多事，而她的攻击有一长串。Okay, so the topic for today has been animals that can mimic other animals, Batesian mimicry, and these examples that we've given you show that animals don't have to pack deadly weapons to survive in nature. They can pretend to be someone else, and then predators will leave them alone. Yes, and we've seen several examples. We've seen examples of bees and wasps and flies that mimic their patterns and their colors. We've also talked about the king snake and the coral snake, and of course the mimic octopus, which can morph or change into almost several different other animals, which allows it to hide in plain sight. Yes, indeed, that is good enough to make predators keep their distance. If you keep your distance. That means you stay away from something, or you don't get really close to something. For example, if you're driving down the highway and you notice the car in front of you is kind of going left and right and slowing down and speeding up, well, that person might be a drunk driver. So you want to keep your distance. Don't get close to that car, or you might get into an accident. And for these accomplished Batesian mimics, there's really no shame in faking it. And remember, we are talking about. Batesian mimics. A mimic, of course, is a person or an animal that copies something else, either for fun, for entertainment, or for survival. Right, and Roger, you know the saying, "Fake it till you make it." Well, in the case of the animal kingdom, these animals fake it to make it. In other words, they fake it in order to survive. So, in this case, faking it is a good thing.、Mm, makes you wonder how people fake things in real life to make them look like they're more important or less important than they really are. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's turn things over now to our Chinese teacher. Hello,同学，大家好，我是Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第一部分的最后一句写道：一看到王蛇身上独特的红、黄、黑条纹，就足以让掠食者再三考虑是否要吃掉它，以防它和几乎长得一模
but I'll call you tonight in any case. 我不确定会议会开多久哎，但不管怎么样，我今天晚上会打电话给你的。那么第三个补充的是 in somebody's case 或是 in something's case。那你也可以用 in the case of 去接名词来表达以什么的例子，以什么的情况来说。那么 case 在这边就是有情况案例的意思。举例来说 ，berries are good for your health. In the case of blueberries, they can help lower blood pressure. 莓果对健康有益。那以蓝莓为例，以蓝莓的情况来说，它可以帮助降低血压。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Identical. The twins decided to wear identical dresses to the party. Distinctive. Cooking meat over a fire gives it a distinctive smoky flavor. Stripe. Danny painted stripes on the gas tank of his motorcycle. Innovative. We are looking for an innovative graphic designer to join our team. Disguise. Her attempt at disguise involved wearing dark glasses and a cap. Resemble. Her writing style resembles that of her idol, Oscar Wilde. Accomplished. By the time he was 15, he was already an accomplished piano player. Discussion starter starts now. Here's our discussion starter for today, and the question is: Do you think it would be more beneficial for an animal to have colors that signal danger, or colors that help it hide in its environment? Why? Well, in my opinion, an animal with the ability to change its shape or to hide in plain sight, in other words, camouflage itself, would probably be more likely to survive, since it could hide and wouldn't have to engage with the predators because the predators wouldn't notice them or the predators would totally ignore them, and that way they can avoid being eaten, which is the main goal of. All the animals in the animal kingdom. Interesting. Well, I think that animals should not have those abilities to begin with. If they have those colors, I think they're not being sincere. They're being dishonest, and they need to have those fighting skills in order to survive in the wild. They should be able to sting people, to bite them, to、uh, be venomous, and、uh, not have those fake colors. I think it's insincere. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Candice. See, See you, you next time. time.